Okay, in order to learn basic stitching, we are all going to be sewing a Pop-Tart. So here are the things that you're going to need for your Pop-Tart. You need an icing flavor. You'll need a front and a back for the pastry. Later, you'll need some stuffing, probably not to start off. You'll need um, thread and a needle. Also helps to have some scissors handy. So the first part of hand sewing is threading your needle which is probably the hardest, most frustrating part of sewing. So when you are getting your thread, you never wanna get more than an arm's length. So what I do is hold one end in my finger and then I stretch my arm out to my armpit and cut right there. So this is an arm's length for me. You know, it'll be however long your arm is. That's an arm's length for you. The reason I only get an arm's length is because as I'm pulling my needle through, I'm not gonna have to keep doing like pull, 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 cause it'll just stop at my arm's length. So <clears throat> two, thread your needle. You may wet it if it's a little bit frayed and, or you might like, if you have fingernails, you might wanna flatten it out to get the thread through the eye of the needle. The eye of the needle is the hole in the needle. This is the hardest part of hand sewing. Get that thread through the needle. Now, we're not gonna put a knot here because that's gonna keep catching when we sew. We're just gonna leave a little tail so it has some excess so when it's pulling through, it won't slip out easily. So leave a little tail here, no knot, we're going to go to the very end of our thread and then this is where we want a knot to go. So when you're making your knot, I do um, a triple knot that's really thick because we're using kind of a loose weave. Uh, this is felt, so it's a loose weave, so we need this knot to be pretty thick. Here is how I tie a knot. Take two fingers, wrap my thread around it, kind of open those fingers up. And then I push this through once. That's a single knot. I'm gonna wrap it around again twice. That's a double knot. Three times, that's a triple knot. And pull it to the end. So like, see, that's a pretty thick knot. Okay, so we are gonna start attaching our Pop-Tart so here's all we're gonna need to start. Um, we're gonna get rid of the back piece. We're not gonna need that yet. Put it to the side. Right now we're just gonna be attaching our frosting to our pastry. So you can kind of just hold it in place. Um, there are lots of different kinds of stitches that you can do, but we're gonna just do really basic ones. So when you're starting, you don't want anybody to see this knot. So we're gonna start from behind um, behind the pastry, what's gonna happen is, later we're gonna add this back to it and the knot will be hiding inside so no one will see it. So always start in the back and go through both layers and pull all the way through until your knot is hitting right there so you can't pull through anymore. Uh, this stitch that we're going to do is called um, a tack stitch or a pick stitch. It's just a really tiny stitch that's almost invisible, um, just to keep it really simple. So if I came out right here, if I came up, then I'm going to go back down and I'm going to go like right next to where I came out. Down and pull it all the way so you can barely see it. So if I just tack it on in one place, this felt is gonna be loose. So I, at the very least, wanna at least tack it on at the corners, but I might um, find that it needs to be tacked on in more places. So now my thread's in the back. So I'm coming from back to front on this bottom corner, going through both layers now at this point if you pull too tight it's going to collapse this guy so you kind of have to hold it in place 
pull, hold it in place, and then go right back down where you just came up, right next to that stitch, so it's like almost invisible. Now we're in the back, so you need to come to the front, and we're gonna do this corner. Okay, so it's stitched on here pretty well. If you wanted to add some reinforcing stitches, you could, um, but this is, you know, just basic for us to learn stitching. If you wanted to add like across, you could do that. We are not going to cut this because we're gonna be able to use this excess to sew our front and back together. So notice the back of it's kind of a hot mess but it doesn't matter because that's going to get sandwiched inside of here and no one's going to see it now i'm going to attach my front to my back so i'm just going to put them together like this and then i'm going to use these um ball end needles to hold these together while i'm sewing so they don't come undone so here's what i do i'm going to put a needle up here and a needle down here to keep it from wiggling so I go in through all layers and then pop back out. So I do that somewhere towards the top and then somewhere towards the bottom. So down through all layers, through all layers, and then pop back up so it'll be held in place. So now my thread is coming from inside of here, which is perfect because no one's going to see any of my knots. So I'm going to show you two different types of stitches that you can do to close your seams. Um, the first one's called a running stitch. It's really simple. Um, it doesn't look as nice, but basically it's an over under sort of stitch. So I need to first get my needle through to the top. So I'm just going to go through my top layer, pull that all the way through. And then all I'm going to do is down and up and down and up. So down through both layers. And then since I'm on the back now, I'm going to come up through both layers. So you can control, it's going to make like a dotted line basically. You can control how big those stitches are or how small they are. You can have them really tiny like how your little pick stitch is or you can have them as like a dashed line. Basically, you're just going up and down. So that's one way to do it. Um, you would just go all the way around. Uh, I'm gonna show you another way to do it. So I'm gonna kind of reverse this. That looks a little bit more professional. So I'm gonna unthread my needle. And if I if I ever make a mistake, like accidentally roll over like this, I unthread my needle and I just use the butt of my needle to undo what I just did. Okay, this next stitch is called a blanket stitch. So it gives you a little like nicer finish. Um, so I just reversed back to where I was coming from the inside, we just pin this together. Um, once again, I have to get my needle to the front. So I'm just gonna go through that front layer. And now all I'm gonna do forever and ever is down and through. So here's what I mean by that. I'm gonna go down next to that first stitch, down. And before I pull it all the way tight, I'm gonna go through that stitch. Oop. What happens is it pulls that stitch to the edge, pull it tight, and it's gonna give it like this finish line across, across the edge. So down and through is all I'm doing down
and where I have that little loop right there, through, and pull. Makes it look really neat. Oh, and it kind of looks like a little Pop-Tart texture. So down and through forever and ever. And pull. Make sure you're pulling as you go, otherwise it's gonna get like little loops in it. So I'm gonna continue with this blanket stitch. I'm gonna go all the way around. When I get to corners, just keep doing the same thing. Um, and I'm going to go until I get to maybe here. I need to leave a little tiny pocket open here for my stuffing. So I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Um, really, I'll probably just go as far as this yarn will take me. So I'll do this in fast mode. Okay, chances are you are going to run out of thread before you can make it all the way around. Here is what I would do. Um, don't get it so tiny that you can't move your needle anymore so probably about the length of your needle is when you need to stop um, all i'm going to do is go back through this last little loop that i went through and then through this new little loop that it makes pull my needle through it's going to make like a slip knot and then i'm just going to stick the excess inside of here so no one sees it so it's going to be held in place with that knot and then my extra nobody's going to see it now you are going to need to re-thread your needle and um, so you can go around so remember when you're threading it leave a little tail no knot here go to the very end and do a triple knot there Okay, this time, instead of starting in the back, we don't want anybody to see our um, knot. So we're gonna start in between the pieces, just like our last one where we tucked in that tail so no one would see. Um, but I'm gonna go back through this last stitch where I came through. I'm gonna try to get it to go right back through that hole or pretty close to it. So it'll just look like a continuation. Tuck that little guy in there, and then we'll continue with our pattern of down and through. Down and through that loop. Okay, now I'm about an inch or two inches away from finishing. I'm gonna take out these pins and add my stuffing. So this is pretty tiny. I don't need a lot of stuffing, but you usually need more than you think you're gonna need. So I have this little opening. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need a little more than that because it flattens out a lot. And once you have your stuffing about how you want it, then we're gonna close it up. So I'm just gonna continue my stitching to the end. Okay, a couple more stitches to finish this and I'll show you how we're going to do our last knot. All right, so I tried to go right back to that, kind of right through where that first original stitch was. And now, just like when we were getting a new needle going to loop under that last little stitch and then I'm going to go through this loop pull tight that will make a slip knot and now <clears throat> I don't want this excess to be seen so I'm going to go between these two pieces of felt between the little sandwich felt and I'm just going to go hide my needle inside of here and then kind of feel around and let it, my needle pop out the back. Pull my thread tight. Pull it tight. Cut. 
and then that excess is just kind of hiding somewhere inside of my pop tart all right then i'm going to um, make a little hanger for it so i can hang it up maybe it's like a ornament or something you can um, i don't know make a keychain or something so i'm not going to unthread this i'm just going to go to the back decide what side you want to be your top just whatever it doesn't matter i'll make this my top and then just in the back i'm just going to go in and back out now i can take my needle off and i'll take this and make a knot And now you can hang up. The last thing I'm going to do is add some little decorative details. So when you are making your um, plushie of your choice, if you have little tiny details that are like too small for you to make little patches or do stitches of, um, you can use this puffy fabric paint. Um, so like this could be done as a stitch, but just to save time and, and because there are more colors here. I'm just gonna make little sprinkles. Oh, wow, that's not a little sprinkle, that's a huge sprinkle. I'm gonna try to keep them all smaller than that crazy one. Make little sprinkles for my Pop-Tart. So if you had like a character and you had a face or something and you didn't want to use felt patches, you could just use this puff paint. Just be careful when you're using it not to like drag your hand on it and have it smear everywhere. Okay, so this will take a while to dry because it's really thick puff paint, um, but it should be dry bet before your next enrichment class. And that's it. Now for your project, you're gonna make your choice plushie. Um, the requirements are that it has an attachment piece that's a patch, so like just like we added this frosting, that was a patch. Um, and it has a front and a back with stuffing in it. 